there's a 99% chance you didn't notice this plot hole in Attack on Titan. If a normal Titan eats a Titan shifter, their appearance completely changes to match the one they ate. The issue here is Ymir. She ate Marcel as a pure Titan and gained the power of the Jaw Titan. As I'm sure we all know, the Jaw Titan looks like this. Ymir, on the other hand, looks like this. Her Titan form barely changed, and it doesn't look like she inherited the Jaws or the Claws that come along with being the Jaw Titan. I think the writer was just backed into a corner here. He developed the character Ymir before he came up with her background of having the Jaw Titan ability. There's 11 more plot holes, and the last one is so bad that it nearly ruined the entire anime. Okay, so I mentioned that Ymir ate Marcel, right? Well, there's another plot hole here too. Since Marcel had the jaw titan power, Ymir should have transformed back into a human within the next couple minutes. This would have given Reiner and his friends the chance to eat her and regain the jaw titan ability. But instead, Reiner, Annie, and Berthold all ran away in fear. This makes even less sense when you remember they each had the ability to turn into titans. Now, this isn't the greatest plot hole for one main reason. One could argue that Reiner and his friends were so shocked that they didn't stop to think things through. This ties into our next plot hole. Reiner and his friends were only 12 years old when they left to sneak into the walls. You would think that Marley would send some sort of supervision to watch over them, right? If I was the ruler of Marley, I would order a supervisor to go with them all the way to the wall. The supervisor's orders at the wall would be to see if Reiner, Annie, and Berthold were successful in breaking into Wall Maria. This supervisor would report back to Marley with the results. There is a counter argument, however. Marley doesn't just give the Titan shifting ability to anybody. Reiner's group went through intense training to become Titan shifters. I think it's plausible to say that Marley trusted them to carry out the mission. But wouldn't it have been smart to make the journey to the walls a bit more efficient for Reiner's group? This is where the next plot hole comes in. You see, I find it quite odd that Marley didn't send the Cart Titan out with them. One of the Cart Titan's special skills is that it can travel in Titan form for very long distances. It's also the second fastest Titan out there. This would have come in very handy in getting Reiner's group to the wall safely. The cart Titan could have delivered them all to the wall and then immediately returned home. Marley knew that the trek to the walls was dangerous, so there's only one excuse I can think of. You see, Marley was non-stop using the Titan shifters to wage war on other nations. It may be that the Marleyans needed the cart Titan for another war they were waging or something. But there's no excuse for this next plot hole. If you've got a good memory, you remember the scene where Historia punches Captain Levi. You probably remember thinking, that was kind of random, and there's a good reason you thought this. You see, in the original manga, Historia really did not want to become the queen of Paradise Island. However, Levi rudely told her to follow his orders and take up the crown. She got pretty mad about this. After he left her presence, someone told Historia that she could punch Levi after becoming queen to get revenge. This is where the plot hole happens. For whatever reason, the director of the anime decided not to include this information in the show. Because of this, there is no real context or reason for Historia punching Levi. But does it really matter if we know why Historia wants to punch Levi or not? This next plot hole is way more important, and it happens when Grisha Jaeger is saved by the owl. You see, Grisha was seconds away from being turned into a titan when the owl saved him. After revealing his identity to Grisha, the owl turned into the attack titan and completely destroyed the fleet of Marleyan ships in the harbor. Now, here's the plot hole. When the ships didn't return to their homeland, Marley must have known that something was wrong. If they sent people to investigate, they would have found the wreckage of the ships left behind. Therefore, a logical conclusion would be that the Titan Shifter was on Paradise Island. However, this attack on the fleet is never mentioned again. I'm going to be honest, this plot hole is more important than the last one, but it's still not mind-boggling. That's where Armin's indestructible plot armor comes in. After facing off against the Colossal Titan in Season 3, Armin is literally burnt to an actual crisp and then falls 164 feet. The plot hole here is how the hell he survives this deadly combo. The common counter-argument to this plot hole is to say that, uh, dude, people have survived falls higher than that before. If you're saying this though, you're missing the point. Armin didn't just fall 164 feet, he was burnt to a blackened crisp as well. If you're already severely injured, there's no way you can survive a fall that high up. But if you think this plot hole is crazy, this next one actually blows my mind. In season two, Ymir, Reiner, and all the others are surrounded by titans and trapped in a castle tower. Reiner and Ymir leave this group to go explore the rest of the tower and discover a box full of canned foods. This is where it gets interesting. Ymir reads the can, says it's herring, a type of fish, and then hands it to Reiner. Reiner looks at the can, but is completely shocked by what it says. Only 1% of you guys are subscribed to the channel? No wonder Reiner is shocked. You guys are lacking. Subscribe right now.
But seriously, there's a lot to unpack here. The cans of food are from Marley, so fans point out that their presence on Eldia is a plot hole. However, this is 100% wrong. The story behind the cans is pretty simple. When Zeke and the Cart Titan traveled to Eldia, they brought food with them, aka the cans of food. The real plot hole here is the fact that there is a different language on the cans. Eldia and Marley have been split up for 100 years. That is nowhere near long enough for an entirely new writing system to be created. When I googled this, I found that it takes between 500 and 800 years for a language to completely evolve. For example, Shakespeare wrote his plays over 400 years ago, but you can still more or less understand his writing. I think that the writer of the show just forgot this little detail and it's okay. One detail that he definitely shouldn't have forgotten is about Grisha Yeager's first wife. When Grisha Yeager and his wife Dina Fritz and the rest of the rebels were being tortured, one crazy fact stood out to me. Not a single rebel confessed that Dina Fritz had royal blood. I mean, come on! What are the chances of that happening? The common counter argument here is that the rebels were 100% dedicated to their cause. They were willing to die to protect this grave secret. But the real plot hole here is the Marleyan officials didn't perform a blood test on Dina Fritz. It seems normal to test the blood of Eldians so as to verify their identity. For example, Eren Kruger had to fake his blood test to become a Marleyan official. With the help of a doctor, they were quite easy to pass. But if you're as smart as me, you probably noticed a problem. Eren Kruger was trying to become a Marleyan officer. Dina was just a rebel, so they didn't think to check if she was royalty. In my opinion, the next plot hole is way worse than this one. Ever since AOT revealed that the walls were made of Titan hardening, I've been a bit confused. Titan hardening looks like this, and the walls look like this. We've seen multiple Titans use Titan hardening, and it doesn't remotely look like what the walls are made of. The reason behind this plot hole is pretty simple. If the walls didn't look like normal walls, it would be a lot harder to keep their importance a secret. Just imagine if the walls looked like the crystallized hardening. You'd know there was something up with it. Here's the craziest plot hole in the entire series. An important rule for Titan shifters is that they cannot transform into a titan if their body is injured. That's because the titan ability is busy healing their injuries instead. After transforming, if your body's severely damaged, it's too busy healing to let you resume your titan form. This is exactly how Reiner and Berthold managed to kidnap Eren in season two. They cut off his arms, which meant he couldn't transform into the attack titan to fight them. Now, let's jump way back to Eren in the titan's stomach. He had just saved Armin, got his arm chopped off, and been swallowed by the titan. Because his arm is chopped off, he's not supposed to be able to turn into a titan. His body should be following the rule we established above and focusing on healing his body. But even though he was injured, Eren was able to transform into a titan. If the anime had bothered to follow the rule they created, the whole show would have ended right there. Eren was just too injured to transform and he should have died. But did you notice the moment where Levi had a crush on Mikasa? If that sounds interesting, click this video right here.